Right. Anybody who has a special needs child, uh-huh. they have more estate planning. And it's that much more important. You need a plan for what happens if something happens to you. And there's three basic legs of it. Mm-hmm. What happens to you and your health? What happens to your money? And then what happens to the things and living things that you're required to take care of? Who do you want to take care of your kids? What if there's somebody that is natural that's going to look real good to the court and is definitely not somebody that you want taking care of your kids or your pets? What if you know that somebody's an animal abuser or that they, they have dog fighting that they use and they're going to use your dog as a bait dog? Part of a healthy plan is you writing out what your thoughts are and how the kids should be raised. That should keep you up at night. If you don't have a plan in place and you don't know what's going to happen to your family, your kids, mm-hmm. your your wife, whatever, like you should be stressing about that at night. Some people set up a trust where they list out all of that stuff and their beneficiary designation is the trust. Anytime that there's a, an addition or a subtraction from your family, whether it's by death or divorce or birth or adoption, mm-hmm. Anytime that that happens, you want to have that addressed. Find a lawyer that is going to give you a newsletter or some videos, something that you can keep up with that's up to date. The reason why you watch this stuff is for general information and then for your actual circumstance, you go to your actual lawyer and talk to them about it. In an hour of an attorney's time, you would be surprised what we can accomplish for you about your big picture and your goals. Tell us where you are now. Tell us what your goals are, and then here's what we need to do to get you from where you are now to where it is that you want to be so that what you want to happen does happen. I wanted to do videos because there's a lot of words on our website, and I made a video script, and one of the things you're like, what happens to your to your pets, your dog and the cat? And then you're like, what about the fish tank? What about the fish tank? I mean, I almost just cracked. It, like, it was really hard to just not I wish you would have. Burst been a out laughing. Out <laughs> what about the fish tank? But I really, I was like, what about the fish tank? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it is. It's very funny. Okay. But no one thinks of that. You're going to come home and all your fish are going to be dead. Yeah. You have to have a plan for this stuff. Yeah. I mean, think about um, like uh, Andrew. Uh Uh-huh. Think about Andrew. Oh, I know. He's got a major aquarium and and tank and all that. And if something happened to him and he doesn't have a plan for that, then all the fish die. Right. And how's anybody going to know? Right. You have to take care of all the little pieces because if there's a break in your plan, then something bad happens during that break. Yeah. Such as your pets pass away. Exactly. And you have to have, there, there is a sequence of an, a certain finite amount of things that mm-hmm. you have to make sure that are taken care of for you to have an actual healthy well, estate plan. So Otherwise death comes. Exactly. And you know, what's interesting about what you're saying, everything you say, everything that's on our website that's written, mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. You did a probate a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. a consultation. Yep. And the guy's aunt passed away. Yep. And he states in there how uh, animal control was there to get the dog yep. and cats. Yep. Okay. And he, he stopped them. Barely. He, Luckily. Yeah. He just got lucky. He did. And I sat there and I thought about it. Like when I listened to the call, I was like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Like those animals, who knows what would happen to oh, them. Yeah. They get wrongfully adopted out. Uh-huh. Even same day stuff. Mm-hmm. Or they get euthanized. And accidentally euthanized. Yeah. Or some places, after the third day, their policy is to euthanize. Yeah, it, it just depends on how long they're sitting there. Yep. And what space, like if they don't have room at yep. the shelter, they're, mm. it's gone. Yeah. It's and so good. I, like, I don't know, you know, you can read it and you can think about it and you don't really process it until you actually hear someone was affected yep. by it. Yep. And so this is real life stuff yep. that people need to recognize can happen to them if they're not prepared and it's the number one procrastinated thing in life Mm -hmm. why because you don't need it until you need it exactly when you need it it's too late Mm -hmm. and people person after person after person after person always learns it the hard way Mm -hmm. and i it's so frustrating to me when people call in and they tell me this problem and i'm like i sorry i failed you you know why i failed you because i thought i couldn't have enough 
I couldn't have more business than we were getting. We we're, we we're keeping a good capacity. I didn't want to overflow our system. So I didn't put this educational material out because I was worried that too many people are going to be calling us and wanting us to fix this stuff. And I didn't have a good way to help a lot of people. Well, I do now. And it's, I feel like it's my fault if this message doesn't get out to people that you need this stuff and you got to take care of this stuff. So right. please, please get this stuff. Subscribe to this show. I'm giving you this information for free. And so subscribe to us, like, follow, you know, make sure you have the alerts on. Some ask, of our stuff is entertaining. Some of our stuff is critically right. educational. I mean, there's so many things I can say right now. Like ask your parents, do you have a, a will yep. or an estate plan in place? Ask your parents if they've got a financial power of attorney. Do they have a medical power of attorney? Like, are you their executor? Like you need to be asking yep. these questions because you yep. need to know these documents. You need to have these documents because what happens if something happens to one of your parents and now you got to take control? Yep. Um, or if you're older, make sure your kids have it at age 18. They need this stuff mm -hmm. at under 18 by virtue of the fact that you're their parent. You get to decide this stuff on their 18th birthday. That goes away and they're completely unprotected. Right. They need it from the time that they're 18. So if you're in your 20s or you're in your 30s, or you're in your 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s at any point in time, you need a plan for what happens if something happens to you and there's three basic legs of it mm -hmm. what happens to you and your health what happens to your money and then what happens to the things and living things that you're required to take care of like kids and pets what happens and if you're do you in, know do you know that yeah. you know and are and how and why are you certain for example because you have a card in your wallet that says, here's where my stuff is. Here's who to call. If you're the nurse that just cut my wallet out of my pocket, who is this guy, this person? Well, they have your driver's license number. If somebody goes to your house and they knock on the door and the dogs bark, what do they do? Do they break your door down to save the dogs? No, they don't. Do they know who to call? What ha Do you have it in your phone? Your phones have some emergency information in it. What happens if the phone's dead? What happens if the phone's broken? What happens if the phone's not with you? What happens if the phone, like, you got robbed and then knocked down the head? Your phone's not with you because they took it. There's all kinds of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. All kinds of issues. And so we're trying to think about all those issues and pre-plan what you want to happen because you don't want anybody guessing. You don't want us as lawyers to guess. You don't want the judge up at the courthouse to guess. You don't want that. And because... They're probably going to guess wrong because how do we know? We can't read your mind if you're in a coma at the hospital. And do you want to be revived? Do you not? Do you want to be a, a, an organ donor or do you not? Do you want who do you want to take care of your kids? What if there's somebody that is natural that's going to look real good to the court and is definitely not somebody that you want taking care of your kids or your pets? What if you know that somebody is an animal abuser or that they they have a dog fighting that they use and they're going to use your dog as a bait dog? A bait dog is where they put them in and that, that dog's the one that's going to get killed to train the other aggressive dogs. Right. All kinds of stuff like this happens. How many acceptable minutes is it for you that your kids are going to be in CPS custody? And how's CPS going to know who to give them to? You got to take care of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you think, oh, yeah, well, it's in my will. Your will only goes into effect when you die. Right. What about there's two phases. There's incapacity before death. Sometimes they're immediate. You're instantaneously killed in a car wreck. Instantaneous. They never even got you out of the car. You, as soon as you hit your head, you were out, gone, within 10 seconds. But what happens if you hit your head and you're in a coma for six months? Or you're in a vegetative state but alive, or you, just don't, you, you, you're, you kind of have some mental deficiencies or something, so you can't make your own decisions anymore, and you're alive for the next 10 or 20 or 30 years. Then what? And how do we know? Maybe you come to and you're okay, but is that that you want to have to make those decisions at that point? Is that the person that you want to be making those decisions? You've got to do this stuff ahead of time. Mm -hmm. It's so important. It's so important. It doesn't matter if you're single, you're a parent, right? right. You're a grandparent. Right. I mean, you need to be putting this stuff if in place. If you're breathing, yes. You need to have this stuff in the place. You're an adult, you need to take care mm -hmm. of this. Absolutely. And not have to worry about it. Yeah, that's the other thing. That should keep you up at night. If you don't have a plan in place and you don't know what's going to happen to your family, your kids, mm -hmm. your your wife, 
whatever, like you should be stressing about that at night. Part of you is. Because we never know what tomorrow leads. Tomorrow mm -hmm. could be our last day on earth. We don't know. There's a part in you that not having that, you're living a different life than you would by having it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a level of confidence and security and surety that you have about life when you have those things into place. You actually feel more responsible and it actually makes you more responsible. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a better person. Even if it's just a little bit, or you think, no, not really. Yeah. I am universally told that by clients and by people. And I know it for myself. Yeah, I agree. And you need to have conversations with the people that you want to put in place. You need to make sure that they're comfortable mm -hmm. being your Absolutely. executor. Yeah. You need to make sure that they are the right person you want raising your kids if something yep. happens to you. You need to have those tough conversations. Yep. Make sure they're going to raise your kids the way you want them raised. Right. Part of a healthy plan is you writing out what your thoughts are and how the kids should be raised. Right. There's a lot to it, but there's basic legal instruments that you need as well. The stuff that you need a lawyer for. Mm -hmm. And don't try and do this stuff yourself. Oh, my goodness. Please don't get a form off the Internet. No. I don't even like Dave Ramsey stuff. And most of the time I like Dave Ramsey stuff. But as an attorney, like do Dave Ramsey stuff if you absolutely under all circumstances, cannot afford to have a competent attorney do it for you, then, then fine. That's the next best step. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I don't even like that stuff. Why? Because there's always something in there that shouldn't be in there, and there's always something missing that needs to be in there. Mm -hmm. And always, okay, 99.999. Like, for example, if you buy a lottery ticket thinking that that's going to solve all your problems, you're almost always wrong. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, one in 50 million people that I guess are correct. Well, I think people need to recognize, like, what is your estate worth? You know, what is it worth? And then put the dollar amount. If an attorney is going to charge you $5,000 to do an effective estate plan, mm -hmm. then it's worth $5,000, you know, because you've got a house, you've got kids, you've got, you know, investment accounts. Mm -hmm. Think about if you've got a 401k or you've got, mm -hmm. you know, um, an IRA, mm -hmm. all these different things in place. Like, you need to protect that. Yep. And you need to check all of your beneficiary designations on every account that you have mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't have a beneficiary designated or they have the wrong person designated or they've done it the wrong way. And that is something that's very, very important. So if you every one of your retirement accounts, every one of your investment accounts, every one of your bank accounts, you need to check and see who your beneficiaries are for that. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Um, you have your spouse listed as your beneficiary and you mm -hmm. put a hundred percent to your spouse. Yeah. Is there a way to do something like if what happens if both spouses die together? That is exactly what the common problem is. They mm -hmm. both only name their spouse and then what? Well, then it goes to their estate and that has to be dealt with in the probate court, at least right. in Texas and a lot of states. But the judge in the probate court has to determine what happens. Some people set up a trust where they list out all of that stuff and their beneficiary designation is the trust. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the bank automatically pays that out. You don't have to go to court for any of that. Okay. And then it, it just operates based on the terms of the trust, mm -hmm. which is a good way to do it. I don't think that that's worth doing it for anybody that has under a million dollars net worth mm -hmm. as a general rule, but there are exceptions to that. Right. Anybody who has a special needs child, uh -huh. they have more estate planning. And it's that much more important. If your child is disabled um, or in any kind of a way, special needs, you must do this stuff immediately and update it. You, you need to look at it every two to five years, five years at the most. Right. Because it's rare that somebody's going to go more than five years without making at least some kind of change. Mm -hmm. um, that somebody that they don't like is a, is a beneficiary or they have somebody that's better or somebody you know, just something and it changes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just small changes. If you go back to the original attorney that did it, they can just go to the original editable documents, make your changes, re-execute the will. It's not a whole brand new start over, but it is a point of, look, tell us where you are now. Mm -hmm. Tell us what your goals are. And then here's what we need to do to get you from where you are now to where it is that you want to be so that what you want to happen does happen. Right. Um, and anytime that there's a major event, a new child is born, even though it says all my then living children, no, you want to name the kids in, in, inside of the documents. And anytime that there's a, an addition or a subtraction from your family, whether it's by death or divorce or birth or adoption, mm -hmm. anytime that that happens, you want to have that addressed 
uh, and update your estate plan. Right. And the first time you do it, it should be more expensive than the other times that you do it, especially if you go back to the same law firm that, that you've used before because it's not usually a whole brand new situation. It's just, okay, let's make a tweak to it. It's replacing tires on a car mm -hmm. and then running a few practice laps instead of building a whole brand new race car. Right, because laws change. Laws also do change. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things that made sense for you five years ago because taxes change or different laws change or something happened, uh, sometimes it's by, you, by going every five years, you'll catch that. And ideally, um, you'll also subscribe or, or, or watch this podcast, for example, mm -hmm. about things that in, in the law that have changed. If you're not in Texas, we're not going to be informing you on this particular podcast about the updated new laws in your state because probate is a state law issue. Find a lawyer that is going to give you a newsletter or some videos, something that you can keep up with that's up to date. And look, don't get your information off of TikTok. Yeah, don't. Because you're getting a whole lot of absolutely wrong information. TikTok's not regulated. You need to go to licensed attorneys. New and don't kind of, go to ChatGBT. ChatGBT will lie to you. Yes. ChatGBT is wrong. And Google, if you think that you're getting correct information by Googling it, even if you're reading lawyer websites or something like that, what you, you're, you're getting wrong information. And you're getting information that's probably not applicable to you. The reason why you watch this stuff is for general information and then for your actual circumstance, you go to your actual lawyer and talk to them about it because I've had plenty of people that are like, hey, what about a living trust? What about a ladybird deed? What about a uh, prenup or postnup? What about, you know, fill in the blank um, and do I need it? And there's a lot of times where I tell people, yeah, that's a good idea, but there's probably more times where they've watched something like that, and I tell them, no, you don't want to do that. In, in your particular circumstance, that's not a good fit for you. I feel like we get a lot of questions for ladybird deeds, and mm. in the end, that's not what they need. They think in their mind that's what they need because they've read something or they talked to somebody else. And Some then of them. Come to find I, out. I would say it's about half and half yeah. by the, by the, on the calls that I, that I filter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and that just goes to show that's why you need to speak to an yes. attorney. So I've had this in, in just recently in the past few weeks. I've had someone that has, I, I tell them, you're fine. You don't need anything. You're good. Check the box. Clean bill of health. You know, it's like going to the doctor, you know, doing your blood work, having your exams. You get a physical and you're fine. It's the legal equivalent of that. You need to do that for your all of your legal and, and, and your finances. Um, and... But then I've also had people that come in because they think, hey, my elbow hurts. And then we realize, well, you're having a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the it's the uh, legal equivalent of that of, hey, I think I need a ladybird deed. And I go, actually, you you're you, you here's the real issues that you have. And a ladybird deed is not going to do anything for you um, or it's going to do this one little part. But what about all this? And they go, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, here's what you really need. And we put that in place mm -hmm. and they're very grateful and they solve their problem. They walk away with a lot of peace of mind. Um, or if they are like, I can't do it right now, I can't afford it or for whatever reason, sometimes that happens or it's, you know, then at least they know, okay, I realize I'm in this situation. I'm going to try and solve this as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of things in the way ahead of it, but I will warn you in this, there's always going to be some things that are getting or reasons that you have to procrastinate. It's the number one thing procrastinated and you're going to procrastinate it until it's too late probably. And you never know when it's going to be too late. So get something. Even for people that their stuff starts to get a little bit out of date, um, it's better to have something than not have anything. Right. Um, I agree. And in an hour of an attorney's time, you would be surprised what we can accomplish for you about your big picture and your goals. We can at least evaluate where you are. We can evaluate where it is that you want to be and tell you what you need to do to get from where you are now to where it is that you want to be. And a lot of times... and. We have a lot of consults that I solved their problem in the consult right. and they don't need anything else. I did one what yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just in the past two days, I've had had one of those where hey, problem solved in the consult. I love those, by the way. I love yeah. those. I love them because our goal from the moment that we take a case is to end the case as soon as we, we can with a healthy result. Of course, we have certain standards that we're going to meet. But if when we meet those standards and we've got our client to a healthy place, I, we don't want to have that case lingering on any longer than than, than we need to. Right. And because we want them to move on and be healthy, give us great reviews and send us all their friends and family uh, from from now on. That's how we grow our business. So like, subscribe. We hope that this has helped you. 
We'll see you in the next episode. This is The Lawyer Dana Show.